This is Aaron. Aaron just learned the procedure for chemical spills. Now Aaron takes spills very seriously. Glucose spill. How long has this been here? Well, uh, everybody else out back. We got to avoid secondary exposure. Just a just a small spill back there. I missed the seat. Just a, just a little bit. We're gonna get cleaned up. I don't want to take any chances. I don't want to take any chances. All right, Rob Orman, you want to talk about some toxins? Do I ever. What do you have for me? Toxic industrial chemicals. Sometimes hard to figure out and remember, but this paper is called Toxic Industrial Chemicals and Chemical Weapons Exposure, Identification, and Management by Syndrome. Want to learn me some of that? John like fun. As you can imagine, there is a lot to cover. I mean, this is like a compendium, a comprehensive resource, but it has a lot of cool tables, a lot of good reference material that you can actually take a quick gander through because it is really useful. It's just quite a bit, and comprehensive is the word I'll use to describe this article. But the critical take-home points are that you want to make sure you get a great exposure history, and you also want to recognize the toxidromes because if you recognize the toxidrome, that means you can potentially give an antidote and reverse everything. And last, you want to be aware of what chemicals are predominantly exposed in certain industries because they'll help clue you in on what treatment to provide. Some critical actions you have to consider. First and foremost, we all know this, you got to protect yourself, the staff, and the patient. Uh, and consider decontamination before you pursue the rest of the things. And there are also other like larger uh, things that you want to take care of, like surge capacity. Is this going to be mass casualty incident? Do you need to notify public health? And don't forget poison control. When you talk about exposure history, the two critical things you got to get a hold of is what is their occupation? Again, that'll clue you in what chemicals they were exposed to potentially. And the second thing in the exposure history is determine the red flags for the toxidrome. When you talk about the actual chemical itself and exposure, you wanna find out some information like how long were they exposed? Was it a trivial amount? Was it significant? And the route of exposure, was it dermal, inhale, was it inhaled or was it ingested? And of course the dose amount, you're talking the lethal dose, the LD50, where half of them end up dying. So you wanna know all that stuff if you can. When you talk about toxidromes, again, there's a whole list of these, but as an example, cholinergic toxidrome, you have a classic sludge presentation, right? Salivation, lacrimation, urination, defecation, GI upset emesis. If you recognize those in the actual physical exam and history, then guess what? You can give an antidote like atropine to reverse it, um, and you may even have to add on 2 pam or pralidoxin. Wait, wait. So cholinergic, like an organophosphate, you give an anticholinergic as the antidote. Can yep. I, can I tell you? Amazing. <laughs> I've never actually Brain blown. tied <sighs> those terms together. Yeah. Now it makes sense. Oh, thank God. And again, there are lots of tables and a lot of great pieces of information to re refer to. And they even create a table based off of industry. If you're in the aerospace industry, agriculture industry, arts, or a certain manufacturing oil refiner kind of things, or uh, firefighting. And one of the things as far as specific example goes is if you are exposed to hydrocarbons and you're inhaling hydrocarbons either recreationally illicitly uh, like huffing or if you are working with solvents or gasoline then you are at risk for uh, developing not only sleepiness but myocardial irritation uh, the thought and theory behind it is that you have myocardial sensitization to endogenous catecholamines and so Counterintuitively, if your typical interventions don't work, consider beta blocker to decrease that myocardial sensitization and take care of, for instance, a Y complex ventricular tachycardia. If you know that 15 year old kid huffing, sniffing, yeah. whiffing glue down in the cellar, yeah. parents bust him. Straight west coasting. Oh. <laughs> what happens to that kid? VTAC. VTAC. Yeah. VTAC, so catechol you know, surge. Right. What do you do? Cardiac right. arrest. Yeah. Right. And so you can get sudden uh, sniffing death type of picture. And so, again, there's so much to learn as far as all the different chemicals that are possible. But the main take home point that's reassuring is that for most cases, most industrial toxicants, the treatment is going to be limited to decontamination and supportive care. Whew, because like beyond toxidromes and antidotes, like I can't remember the whole list. Yeah. But again, this article provides great tables for very quick reviews, very concise information. Take home points, get a good exposure history, know generally what chemicals are used in different industries. A cholinergic toxidrome, give the atropine. Hydrocarbon inhalation with persistent VTAC, counterintuitively consider giving beta blockers. All right, Rob, you ready for this one? You ready, ready to go? With ready your America uh, scarf on, because I think that's where. 
This is Team, team USA. You Did you ever watch uh, Mork and Mindy? Are you old enough for Mork and Mindy? Uh, am I old enough? At least enough? Mork and Mindy I, I used to watch that live. We, that's when we used to have to wait for TV shows to come yeah, on. Mork and Mindy. That was good stuff. All right. Ready. Mork is a 19-year-old gasoline attendant brought in for lethargy and tachycardia after being found in the supply room inhaling gasoline fumes as he is wont. He is hemodynamically stable except his heart rate is 125 and the cardiac monitor demonstrates VTAC. Sounds like a scary patient. Synchronized cardioversion has no effect. Which of the following medications may be considered to treat the patient's VT? First off, this makes me surprised that Mork never took off as a common name. You Thank know, like, you. Like Wendy did after That's Peter Pan. That's true. Mork. Whatever happened to that? Because he was from Ork, and I don't know if anybody digs that. Just one step away from Mark. Yeah. But the heart is very irritable. It is sensitive to catechols. Mm. It needs a spa day. Ooh. Nothing says spa day for the heart like a beta blocker. Oh, I'm going to go with beta blocker. Beta, like beta that. blockers. Mm -hmm. Done. Done. All right, I'll give you another one. Ready? I'm ready. 48-year-old farmer accidentally spills a tank of pesticide. They got tanks of pesticides laying around everywhere, those farmers. I mean, they have Always no happens. responsibility. You know what I mean? I mean, it's a classic farmer thing. Anyway, and is brought into the emergency department with class cholinergic toxicogram. So he is classic cholinergic. Colon. He is cholinergic. Bradycardia, meiosis, lacrimation, salivation, bronchorrhea, bronchospasm, urination, emesis, and, you guessed it, diarrhea. Which of the following therapies should be administered immediately for this massive cholinergic thingamabobber? He's cholinergic. Yes. He needs his anti-cholinergic. And you? What is your favorite anti-cholinergic? Atropine. Mine too. Turns out that's the answer. Thank you, sir. Go USA. Go Mork from Ork. Go Paul Jen. Slow clap. Nice. Elevator down. <laughs>